Hello P1P friends, I'm here with my beloved Bamboo P1P and today I've got good news for you. Bamboo has pushed through a new firmware and this firmware is focused on fixing bugs that us users have been complaining about. I'm already getting reports in my P1P group that people are having better success getting their camera to work. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at the notes. This was released January 19th, 2023. It is version 1.01.01.00 and it added a few things such as manual extrusion compensation calibration, access code display for wireless LAN, supporting manual connection to the live view. It also addresses one of the dumpster fires on the internet this past week, which was claiming that there was a huge thermal runaway problem with the P1P. And you'll notice in the notes it addresses this. Optimized thermal runway protection for the hot end. <laughs> Improvement and bug fixed. They included a note which states that they've received a lot of feedback. They've been working very hard. This version is focused on optimizing common problems that we've encountered. It also goes on to claim that they are going to be expanding cloud-based features in the future with better remote monitoring, spaghetti detection, AMS auto refilling, land mode, time lapse, etc., 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 etc. If you scroll down, you'll see they added manual extrusion compensation calibration. Users can initiate manual extrusion compensation calibration through Bamboo Studio. This is super cool because they're basically telling us we can put in a filament we want and then have the printer calibrate it by putting out specific test prints and telling the printer which one looks best. Those of you who grew up with inkjet printers will recognize this as suspiciously similar to those old inkjet test print calibrations where we would print a test print, then answer a series of questions over which patterns and colors and squares looked best in order to calibrate those print heads. To calibrate, select the material to be calibrated, either an external spool or an AMS slot, and then click Cali, which is short for calibration. In the dialog box, select the nozzle diameter, material, and hotbed type. You can now click Start to begin calibrating. When the calibration process is complete, select the line with the best printing effect from the printed pattern. Fill the corresponding patterns into the box and click Save. The calibration of the slot is complete. Add an access code display for wireless LAN for manual connection to live stream. This is a big one. Many people have been having trouble connecting to their feed. There is a red blurb here in the notes that state if you bind your printer on an earlier version, you should unbind and rebind the printer with the newer firmware. According to the notes, some live view feature issues are caused by firewall settings, which block studio receiving SSDP packets or router settings, which don't forward SSDP packets to studio handy. The error messages are missing LAN IP of printer or printer cannot be found on the LAN. To fix this, we have added a manual input function, directly input printer IP and access code to the studio slash handy app. If the auto IP detection fails, the manual input will pop up on the studio slash handy app. You can then input this information yourself. This is very interesting and I'm curious to see how this works out for people that are having issues like this. And here it is optimized thermal runway protection for the hot end. We have implemented a new thermal runaway protection algorithm to shorten the delay before protection kicks in. For most thermal runaway cases, the new algorithm can shut down the heater and show the error prompt within 30 seconds. They have adjusted the logic for clearing temperature errors when the printer is idle, where in the previous firmware, some errors are automatically cleared when the error is recovered. In the new firmware, the error is only cleared when the printer power cycles or a new print is initiated. They have four bug fixes listed here in the improvement and bug fix section. Fixed the network disconnection problem. Fixed the problem that the SD card is disconnected or pulled out during the printing process, causing the print to stop and cannot be recovered. Performance optimization. So I suppose they're claiming that if you remove the SD card during a print, you can now stick it back in and recover your print. But don't do that. Let's look at the details, and they're kind of lengthy. It mentions first the need to update your Bamboo Studio or Handy app. 
Two new features are listed, manual extrusion compensation calibration, access code display for wireless LAN supporting manual connection to live view. They have three improvements listed, optimized thermal runaway protection for the hot end, optimized printer performance and improved long-term print stability, optimized fan speed feedback. Now the fan display is closer to the actual speed. I find number two super interesting. Optimized, improved, long-term print stability. Wow, a lot of us are printing very long, very large models. And I'm curious what was happening earlier that they had to fix that. And it's interesting to hear that there might have been an issue with this and that they have actually actively attacked it and resolved or improved it. Three bug fixes. Fixed the problem where free in the username will cause automatic logout when booting. Fixed the network disconnection problem. Fix the problem that the SD card is disconnected or pulled out during the printing process, causing the print to stop and be unable to recover. There are three notable remaining issues listed here. When using an AMS printing a 3MF file via the SD card, it may fail because the AMS slot cannot be selected. Non-HMS error codes are not displayed on the screen and steps of the calibration process are not seen by Bamboo Studio. I suppose and hope they are continuing to work on those three issues and we will soon see another firmware update that acknowledge them. That said, let's go ahead and do this update. I'm gonna go ahead and download Bamboo Handy Fresh from the App Store on my iPad Pro. And I'm gonna fire up my P1P. You will see that the machine connected to the internet and automatically offered to update the firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and say update. It's going to go from version 01.01.00 to And here you are, the firmware was successfully updated. Confirm, firmware version 01.01.01. .01 the first thing I'm gonna do is delete my currently paired P1P so that I can go ahead and repair my P1P for use with the new firmware. There's my P1P and we are gonna go ahead and bind it. Bingo bango, the printer is bound. And there you have it. We have our brand new firmware updated to our brand new P1Ps. And now we get to be guinea pigs to find out how well it works. Let me know in the comments if you've had better success with your LAN connection and your camera function. Till next time, I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3drundown.com and updating this P1P firmware in hopes of getting our LAN connection and cameras working was today's adventure.